Hello. Welcome. Welcome to this week's episode of Wow, Love Light Inspire the Podcast, especially for women just like you. You know, we interview inspirational women. You know, it really is the go-to podcast that introduces you to women who are industry leaders. They're experts in their field from all around the world and they're totally, totally, totally inspirational. Look, these are amazing women we're going to talk to and it's going to be on all sorts of different topics, all different subjects, and they're going to be, you know, topics that really mean a lot to each of these women and hopefully you're going to find them really interesting and really inspiring. So they're going to be really revealing, fascinating conversations. So I know that you're going to get just as much out of this as I do. So... I'm Lorraine Roberts, your host, and I'm a productivity strategist. I help businesswomen find their direction, especially when they don't know what to do. I want to help you lose procrastination. I want you to move on so you can live a powerful and amazing life. So if you need help getting motivated because you don't know what to do and you don't know how to go about it, then I'm your girl. Each year, I also take a small group of women to a different location around the world and we'll be working on our personal goals, our business goals and doing some spiritual work as well. And we'll be having fun. So this year, at the end of the year, no, let each year I take a small group of women to a different location around the world and we're going to be working on business goals, personal goals, doing some spiritual work and just having fun as we connect with each other. And next year, I'm going to be taking a group of women to the rice fields in Bali. We would love you to join us. So please get in touch, put your name down because we book out quite fast. Now you can find me on Facebook and there's a group called Women of Love, Light and Inspiration Community. Come join us there. We post all sorts of things there every single day. So there's always going to be something of interest for you to see. So connect with us, get in touch with me, and um, enjoy the podcast. Now listen, today we're going to be speaking to Eleanor Ward. Look, she is an amazing woman who started her own print magazine, Prosperity Mag. She followed her dream and made it into a reality. I know you're going to enjoy it. So if you do, please come back every Friday as new episodes are released and a different person will be speaking on something different. And we'd love you to subscribe. Leave us a review and share it with your friends so let everyone know about us. Or you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram. You can go to the website, www.lovelightinspire.com. So welcome, Eleanor. You know, your magazine is absolutely gorgeous. Tell me, what gave you the idea? Or actually, before we even start on that, tell me about you. Who are you and what makes you tick to even create a magazine in the first place? Oh, I am just a girl out here trying to get all the dreams done in a in a really short amount of time <laughs> as i've gotten older i'm like ah, i'm running out of time so uh ever since i was little i've loved magazines and uh, my mom and dad never read typical magazines they read the most high-end magazines in the world and i loved them i loved the town and countries i love they read the time they read the life i mean all that stuff was at our house they, they read ebony and all those types of things too but they always really had you know architectural digests and uh all that kind of different stuff those high-end magazines that you see in the store and you're like i'm not paying that much for that magazine <laughs> mm. uh and my mom and dad would have those so i would see you know uh, country homes. I'd see millionaire homes. I'd see foods I had never, you know, seen or heard of. And so I was like, I just loved it. I said, one day I'm going to start a magazine. Of course, that went to the side of my brain as marriage kids and all that stuff happened. Yeah. yeah. And I started my coaching business and um, I had a bit of a lull in my coaching business because I had, I was putting together courses and things like that. And unfortunately they didn't come to pass. So in the process, and I'm saying this so people will know, you can still push forward with other things. And the process of losing $5,000 to the course builder who never gave me my courses. When I went to see about 
if I could file charges, they were like, well, unfortunately, we're not as far ahead with the law as you all with what you're doing. So there's really no law right now on the books for people that rip you off in the internet creative space. So oh. I was so depressed and so down and I was just like, screw this. And I wasn't getting any more clients. I just didn't care about it. And in the meantime, I don't know, something just crossed my brain and said, start the magazine. Do something that will make you happy. So I didn't know how to start a magazine. <laughs> so I bootstrapped it. I didn't contact anybody. I didn't watch any videos. I sat down and I went and just sent out emails to people that I liked online. And that's really not the best way to do everything, but I didn't care. And I was like, this is who I am. I'm starting a magazine. Would you be willing to be in it? And I had people that were like, sure, we'd love to help you get started. And so the first, that's how the first issue came about. A lot of people were just willing to help me do it. They were kind. Um, they liked my writing. And I wrote the whole thing, give or take a couple of ladies that wrote their own stuff. And I found an amazing young lady that stepped in. Uh, she lives in the Philippines. And she said, um, I would love to help you. And she actually came in my inbox and said, do you need like a logo and all that stuff? I'm like, no. I said, do you know how to make a magazine? <laughs> and she said, no. But if you give me a day and I'll get back to you. She took one day. I didn't hear from her. And the next day she said, I think I can put it together. So I did all the writing, all the pulling people together and I gave it to her and she made it into the beautiful thing that it is. And we've been paired up ever since. And so then I just started feeling like I can do this magazine and just kept coming out of me and it just kept pouring out of me. And as that happened, I started feeling differently about my coaching business. I started feeling differently about my other dreams that were in weight. And so I said, well, if I can make this magazine happen out of the thin blue sky, I can darn sure start making my other dreams come to pass. And so that's kind of what happened. It was more so a way to pull me out of the deep depression I was in after the situation with the person. And you just, there's no help. And a lot of people don't tell you that happens to a lot of life coaches. We spend the money and people run off with it. And so now I know what to watch for, what to look for, and the types of things I need on that side. And so with the magazine, I really protect it. <laughs> so I don't have anything like that happen to it. And uh, I've gotten <clears throat> what uh, people that love it, people that want to be in it. And um, it just seems to be thriving. So it's, it's really, I'm happy about that. Oh, that is just fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. So it was a childhood dream that you've just realized. Yeah. And don't give up on it, ladies, um, because at this age, I would not have thought, oh, I, I turned 50 this year. I would not have thought, oh, I have a magazine because I kept saying I missed out on everything. I should have did all the stuff in my 30s. Some stuff I don't understand in my age. I'm not going to lie. But I do my best to either watch a video, figure out, or I just say, you know what? How much it will it cost me to um, outsource this? And I hit my uh, my young lady in the Philippines, or I go to Fiverr. I don't know how many people know about Fiverr. It's a, a internet place you can go and get work done. She can't do everything. So yeah, sometimes I have to get on Fiverr and I pay a few bucks and keep it moving. Don't kill yourself trying to figure so much stuff out, especially depending, I'm going to say if you're over 40, some of this stuff, just let somebody else do it just to take the headache off your neck. Yes, yes. Look, the same thing happens with my podcast. I have a, a lady in the Philippines who is absolutely fantastic and she it does all the editing she does and puts everything together for me and I don't need to stress about that. So all <laughs> I need to do is pre-interview my guests, work out whether they're a good fit and then speak to them. And outsourcing is just, it's the only way to do it. Otherwise, yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I couldn't do anything else if that's what I was doing. And it's a skill it set that I don't need to learn. I need to learn other skill sets. Yeah. That was my thing. It was like, I don't need to learn some of this stuff. I, I got to move on and I have other stuff to do. I can't recruit writers and advertisers and all the different stuff I need and try to be an editor and all the extra she stuff she does. So that's what I said. Yeah, I need some help. 
And so I went and got help. I think a lot of times we're trying to do so much by ourselves and it doesn't always work. And, you know, I know a lot of people in the magazine game, the private ownership magazine game, as I'm learning, they don't do editing and things like that. So when people come to me and say, well, do you want me to send it edited? I'm like, you you can, I'm still going to edit it. <laughs> yeah, so I yeah. tell them, you know, it's, it's not a matter of, oh, I'm trying to make you waste money. I don't care when you put it through all the things it goes through, at some point, you still miss a word, you still miss a comma, you still miss a sentence that sounds kind of hinky. And some people do great. They have a professional editor, they send it, and it's totally amazing, I have to touch it. And some people, even after they've had that done, I'll still catch a few things. So I tell them, no matter what you send me, I truly am an editor in chief of a magazine. And a lot of people are doing that now. It's just like, I've literally seen magazines with typos and everything because they say, well, we're not editing anything because that costs extra. So I'm like, that's crazy. No. Mm. Mm. Yes. And look, I know, look, I wrote a book when I had my book edited. You know, I wrote it, went over it, went over it, got it edited, came back, and I still went over it again. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, and even with me, I have to sometimes get a second pair of eyes because I could be reading six articles and my eyes are tired or I've looked at four different advertisements and I'm like, did we spell that right on the advertise? And so after a while, I just have to take a, either a break or get a second pair of eyes. And um, I love uh, Grammarly. I use that a lot. It helps me have that second, third pair of eyes. And then sometimes I have my kids like, look at this one more time <laughs> before I send this to the to the final spot. Uh, and um, let me know how this sounds or that sounds. So um, I think it's just, for me, it's a, it's a real labor of love and I want it to be as successful as it can be. Um, like I said, I'm I'm working very hard with it right now. We're going to be a uh, getting to be an affiliate with um, oh goodness, I can't think of Barnes and Noble. <laughs> so we're working Thank really hard see. on that right now. So they're supposed to be giving us a, a, a date soon because <laughs> uh, we've kind of done our stuff on our end. So that'll be good. Where you can go on my website and you'll see the affiliate links and all that with Barnes and Noble. So that'll be great for the magazine. Uh, and they'll also be, you know, pushing and talking about it. And then we're working on good old Amazon. So I'm hoping by this weekend we'll have some things up on Amazon because that's been months. Ooh. But um, I don't know. I just love it. And I love telling stories because the stories are so diverse. It's just like, wow. Yeah. 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 So determination has got to be one of your biggest strengths. You know, It really is because I don't have... I don't have anyone behind me helping me outside of my kid uh, uh, who's annoyed all the time because mom's old and asking him questions. <laughs> but the only person, you know, on my team, you know, I do have two employees. I have Naja. Uh, she does the the makeup of it as far as putting it together. And then I have a young lady in Columbia <laughs> and she does the website. And so those are my two employees for the magazine and they keep it jumping. They keep me with up-to-date videos, they keep me with uh, marketing materials, they keep me with, you know, flyers, they definitely, um, the authors love it, because they always put together different things for the writers, for them to advertise it, not only they're in it, but even if they don't want to just advertise for the magazine, they can take the flyers, we make them, and they can show someone, hey, this is, I've done this over here, or um, use it for whatever promotional purposes they, they have, so we mm. don't just do stuff for us only to benefit from whatever we do, you're going to benefit from, you know? Um, and so it kind of, I want everybody to have something from it. You have a keepsake, you have a promotional graphic, you have advertising. And most of that comes out of, out of, you know, PBM's pocket, which is, which is not a big deal. Uh, so a lot of people say, well, when you charge for the advertisements, I'm like, man, I am on the low end of the totem pole. I've seen people charge four times what I charge for an advertisement. And so I tell people, you know, you, the cheapness has to stop because if you went to anybody else, they're going to give you ask four or $500 every time you advertise in their magazine. That's crazy. Mm. So we try to make sure we're not overcharging you and that um, you get benefits from being in it. And that's uh, 
what I what I love about what what I've created from it. And I've seen people that have gotten great benefits from being in it, the things that they've shown me after yes. they've been in it. So that's amazing yeah. to me. Yes, yes. Because it's basically you're interviewing inspirational women in some ways, like I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So oh, some yeah. of them have got great stories that you're oh, sharing. Yeah. Yeah. They have amazing stories. They're they're making money people don't even know about. They're doing things people may not have connected to without the story. Um, and a lot of them, for whatever reason, once they have the story, it gives them a push. It's like, okay, I got your story. And I'll look up and I'll see things on their social media I've never seen before. Or I'll see them say, I got a logo and a website now. I got this and I got a that. And a lot of them, I tell them to at least have those things and they get them, but they're not promoting. After the magazine, they're promoting their website. They're promoting and showing people their logos and they're really kind of pushing themselves like, okay, I have a reason to push. And then I'll see two or three months later, they're pushing things about their business and their company. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So I think it's kind of a a help to see yourself on that pretty colored page because everybody in the magazine is in color and it's glossy and it's pretty. And I think, I think Mm. everybody looks amazing and I do my best to make you look amazing. And the stories just kind of jump off the page at you. I've, I've had amazing stories. There's a lady, uh, she was in the first issue. And, um, when she sent me her story, I was like, Oh, I don't know if I can put this in there. It was, she was an ex stripper and now she's a, uh, model, uh, not well, not a model. She's a what do you call it? The pa- she's a pageant queen, and she's in her forties. And she walked uh, the New York catwalk last year. And so to have that story from stripper to being a pageant queen, that's amazing. She yes. transformed herself, you know. So yes. it's stuff like that. And a lot of these, and, and now that's her whole business. She just, she's, she does nothing but pageants. And so she's out there winning the crowns and doing the thing as an, as an older woman in pageants. So I'm like, more power to you. I don't know anything about the pageant world, but that's a lot of work. <laughs> yes. 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 And you also do people that run, I know you said to me that you've got one lady who runs not-for-profit organizations for helping yeah, I people. feature a nonprofit every issue, um, and every one of them is always diversely different. The last lady, uh, she had, she has MS herself, and she runs a nonprofit for people with MS, and she sends people out at no cost to your home, and she builds the home out for the person with MS in the household. And uh, in the article, when I asked her, I said, "Well, how is that different than getting like a ramp?" She was like. Imagine having disease that's so debilitating. Who cares about a ramp? You can't get around your house. You can't do things. She said, there are still people that get up, get up and cook or get up and take care of things with their wheelchair. So we make things at their level. We put things where they can cook safely. We put things where people can come in and help them and drop off groceries. We give them the right size refrigerator. So it was like, oh, I learned a lot. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So she was like, there's more to it than throwing a ramp at somebody's house. Because she mm-hmm. said some people with MS are not in wheelchairs, but they need help in other ways, like, you know, uh, things on the walls or, or I can't think of what they're called right now, all that kind of stuff. So, but every issue, I feature a nonprofit. Uh, the one before her uh, was a lady that goes out and she makes wigs for cancer patients and she literally has a bus. And so I feature her and uh, she, that's what she does. She goes and makes sure can't, people, women with cancer look beautiful before, you know, while they're in treatment or after treatment. And she does makeup and makeovers and she's got a traveling bus that does that. And I'm like, this is some dope stuff that people don't necessarily know about. Not because they're not advertising. I'm sure they're known in their local area, but I'm like, to me, this gets that stuff out nas- nationally that you may not know about because somebody had read it and said, I needed that for a friend of mine, which was going through cancer. And they contacted her. She's in another state. So she didn't drive the bus all the way here. I think the bus is just in her area, but she still did a virtual consult. They got a wig virtually through her oh, and mailed to them. Wow. 
uh, I was just, to me, it's just hearing the stories after the stories in the magazine. So I was just like, yay. <laughs> yes, yes. They're, they're really inspiring women doing incredible stuff. Yeah. Mm. And they're doing it in the small business space. And, you know, somebody said, well, why don't you call something else? Um, I didn't check for Prosperity Business Magazine when I started. I probably should have, but I didn't. I just wanted to call it that. And there are some people out there with kind of a close name to that, but whatever. Things happen. There's tons of businesses that have close to the same name. But I named it that because, to me, when you're in business, you want to prosper. You want to prosper emotionally. You want to prosper physically. And you want to prosper financially. Let's stop pretending we don't mm -hmm. want to eat. I want to eat. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I was like, I'm going to call it Prosperity Business Magazine because these women are out here prospering in, in different ways. And I usually have a woman that I feature as an interview and we just kind of tell her whole story of how she got her business to wherever it is. Um, there's a lot of them doing amazing, amazing things. Just all, the, like I said, all the stories are different. I also have a story I call the Jill of all trades. Uh, and I feature that every issue if I can. And um, that usually is a woman that's got like four different business, four or five different businesses. And she just lets me tell her story. I have a lady that has a, she's a sexologist. She drives Uber. <laughs> She uh, braids hair and what's her fourth business? Oh, she's a travel agent. And so I featured her and her businesses and all the different things that she does. And the biggest thing that I featured Jill of all trades for is because I want people to understand there's nothing wrong with that type of life. And she, I said, why did you go into that in her interview? And she said, because I saw my friend die and she was working with AT&T, the telephone company. And she said, they just went on like she didn't matter. And that bothered me. And she said, I didn't want to be somewhere when I died that I didn't matter. And so that resonated with me. And I put that in her story. And then she said, and I just decided to do what I wanted to do. And she said, and that just meant doing everything that came to my heart. And um, she just recently added a t-shirt business as well. So she's happy. She's able to pay her bills. She's living her life. Um, and you know, when you go on her page, you see all the different things that she's doing all the time. So I think that's amazing because when you have that energy, people are like, well, that's four or five things. She should only focus on one thing. Why <laughs> should she? Cause that's, and I tell people this, cause I'm like that too. If you are a person that cannot stop all the different thoughts, go ahead and promote those things versus trying to focus on one thing and being miserable. So for her, that works for her. And she stays busy and she stays having money coming in. For me, I kept trying to push myself to only be a coach and it wasn't enough. And when I let go of that belt that was around me, that people said I could only do one thing, a lot of other things started happening. The magazine definitely bloomed. And now I'm working on a lifestyle brand as well. And um, the coaching is going to change anyway because I'm getting my counseling degree. So the coaching is going to change anyway. But like I told my son, I want my lifestyle brand. I want the lip glosses and the makeup and the bags and all the stuff that I like and the earrings because that's who I am you know oh I, it, it could, yeah so and and the magazine to me is definitely a piece of that and um I think you should do it what moves your heart and so that I think all those women give a different idea of what moves their heart and there are women that have corporate entities in there and they show us how to get around in the corporations and try to break the glass ceiling and get to your six figures with your degrees and stuff like that. So, you know, they're in there too, but I really like to focus on the small business women. Mm. Oh God, I, he I hear you so much with that last thing. Cause I'm on, here am I doing a podcast? I'm mentoring women in business because I've got a passion for business and I love renovating and, and houses and homes. There's another one. And spirituality is really, is really high up on my list. So I know exactly when people say to me, you know, what is your niche? You've got to niche it down to a small, to a small thing. You know, what is it? And it's like, but I am not just a small thing. I am everything. And I think that's why I was miserable when the coaching thing didn't work out because I had <laughs> padded so much into everything to make it work. 
And so when they stole my little, my little dolets, <laughs> my little money, it was just like, okay, I got to take a break. I don't want to trust the next person. Yeah. I don't know what my next move is. I, yeah. and I never got the templates I sent over for my courses and stuff like that. So everything I had built was gone. So I literally was starting all of that from scratch. Oh, so I began to kind of resent my own business. Yeah. And so the magazine, I finally said, you know what, why do you have to come back to that later? This is something that you can focus on and make happen. You can trust yourself. You yep. don't need a lot of people. And so I went with that. And so now I go with my first mind now. It's like, no, I'm going to have everything that mm. I want. And when I read those, those chick stories, especially the Jill of all trade ladies, it just wakes up something in me. Cause I'm like, okay, if she can do this, I can, I can do some things too. Mm. Yeah. I, I hear you so much. Cause I suppose with my podcast, I can interview all the different people on the different subjects and actually understand the whole lot of it because yeah, I'm a and, and people person. Don't, people don't get it. Of the Jill about trades for June, uh, our June issue that we just had, she the the stories are intertwined with other things. She had low self esteem, self doubt. People were bullying her. This is as an adult woman. Yeah. And she gained weight and all these things. So she went on her weight loss journey when the doctor said, hey, your life's about to change. You're going to be blood pressure, all those other issues. So she went on a different journey and she said, I'm going to take the weight off however I can. And so she did. And I've never seen her in a gym. It's pretty much dancing, skating, uh, movement. I mean, you see her doing all kinds of stuff all over, you know, town mm -hmm. in her in her apartment. So that should show you how how much she was into it. And then when she shook that off, she became, you know, a minister at her church. And then she said, I've always wanted to model, but everybody told me I wasn't good enough. And she has started her modeling career uh, in the last few months. So she's 40, I forgot, 40 plus, put it like that. But in that story where you see all the things she does, because she also owns a cleaning business, then you also see the transformation she had to have to get there, get to get the businesses running, to get her mindset right, to reach some of her dreams. And so people don't understand to get to those places. She had to do a lot of transformation. So when you read her story, yeah. you feel like, yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm. Yeah, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Yeah. So what and these are being something I have feel. You to go through? I mean, what? What transformations have you gone through in your lifetime? Oh, my God. I'm still going through so many of them. Uh, <laughs> <Me you. laughs> the, oh, I, I was, I, you know, what is crazy, I never didn't like myself until I started going to church. I know that sounds crazy. And I don't know, church makes you feel badly about yourself. Mm. And they're not the nicest people. And so I went from liking who I was and being a very affirmative, very strong woman, very strong-willed woman, to this meek, mouse, goofy woman. I didn't know. I let men start walking all over me. I let people talk to me crazily because in my head, church was teaching me that you're supposed to be this meek, humble person. And in a sense, they teach you to let people walk all over you and, and you're just supposed to allow forgiveness. And so it took about five years to come out of that. And I said, you know what? I can't not be me. The strength of who I was came back like 10 times stronger than I had ever been. And I think when I lost my husband and my oldest son in a car accident, I, I don't know why I wanted to tack on to something. Maybe that's why I grabbed onto the church. And next thing I knew, I just, well, somebody didn't recognize, I would go home or I would sit in my car sometime and just cry and be like, why did you let that lady say that to you? And my sister was like, who are you? This is not you. You're so blunt to the point of craziness. And I'm like, yeah. And I met a guy from high school I hadn't seen in a long time. He said, I don't know who this Eleanor is, but I don't, I don't want to be around her. I don't like her. And I thought we were going to date and get married and live this big life. And he said, no, I want the Eleanor from high school. And I was like, where is Eleanor from high school? She had no doubt. She knew what she could do. She was smart. And I'm, I'm good with that. He's married to his fourth wife anyway, so who cares about him? 
But at the end of the day, it was <laughs> it was a wake up call for my transformation. So to be honest, people don't realize transformation is not always to new. I had to transform back to old to bring out the new businesswoman, to bring out the new thought process. I had to go find yeah. Eleanor. And when I refound her and all her old head glory, as my mom used to say, my head was hard as a rock and all of those things, it just opened up everything. And I was like, and I literally had a day, I was sitting down and I said, oh, I feel like me again. That's exactly what I said. And my son was like, because he's, he's, he's so stupid. He goes, thank God. <laughs> he said, I did not. It was like, I hated church mom. And I was like, oh, what? Because <laughs> I thought I was just being this holy, amazing chick. And he was like, no, mom, I don't mean I hated who you were or, or belief. He said, I hated what they were pushing you into, which was being totally a shell of yourself. He said, because by, he said, in all Christian churches doing it, he's right, doesn't matter what color. He said, it's a way of kind of keeping control of people by kind of dumping their personalities out of them. So don't think your kids aren't paying attention because he was. And I said, well, mom's back. Clean up the sink and the dishes. There's no forgiveness. There's none of that. Let's let's get it going. And so at, at the more I kept saying, the old Eleanor was back. I feel like myself. The more I just kind of transformed and I'm, I'm super happy. Like you said, I'm on more of a spiritual path with my life. Um, I'm not missing anything about any church at all. And uh, happiness started coming back in. I was just like, oh, yeah. And along with the happiness, the hardcore gangster girl that was always there, that was, you know, a lot of that came from my mom, who was just kind of a hardcore woman. All of that came back. And people that could get over on me, even the person that took my money with the first situation, that would have never happened if I had been in the my original headspace. But I was in a headspace of, oh, Jesus, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that that was more my transformation of finding my way back to myself. Mm. Mm. So important to know yourself. And we do lose ourselves along the way sometimes, you know, or we never find ourselves in the beginning. No, and it's it's amazing yeah. when you feel when you feel like yourself, when you feel like who you are, when you feel normal. That's amazing. And that's why I think, you know, the ladies um, that'll be able to come on and talk with you um, and shed, you know, a little bit more light than the 600 words in a magazine can shed, you know, because mm. you'll be able to add that more more time uh, on a podcast. I think that's going to be amazing. The things that mm. um, you'll be able to draw out of them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because, yes, through conversation, you can really delve down further into who the person is, which is really, which is what we all want to know. But we are all, sometimes we're too scared to ask too, you know. Excuse mm -hmm. me, but who are you really is a really good yeah. question. And people don't ask that. You and know, it's, it's hard ask. to reveal sometime and say, you know, I made some screwy decisions. I wasn't in my right mind or my right thought process because I had somebody contact me and say well um how could you say you went back to being who you were um because I've talked about that a little bit here and there just kind of saying hey I'm back to my old self it's that's not progressive that's not healing you have to become new I said sometime to become new you have to go back to the old <laughs> yeah, exactly. you have to. yeah I mean yeah. it's the same way when I I remember I was trying to, um, I got to try again. I said, try to lose some weight. And I said, I think I want to go back to the way I ate when my parents brought us up. We were never yeah. overweight. We never felt horrible. We never ate fast food. And so, you know, my sister was like, are you really going to do that? I said, once we get settled, <laughs> I said, I really, my mom put up a menu every week. <clears throat> it was simple foods. Um, we only ate bread maybe once a week, if that. The only reason our family went through bread, bread was because it was seven of us. So a once a week sandwich is going to be gone or school lunches. But I said, as far as just eating it throughout the household, we didn't do that because bread has a lot of sugar. But I said, 
think about how we ate. We didn't have any of these problems. So I said, I've really been thinking about just going back to the diet I ate growing up. And so that's why people are always think it has to be totally new, it has to be keto, it has to be this. Maybe we need to go back to some of the old things. Yeah, simple in order stuff. to become new. Yeah. Mm. Mm. There wasn't biscuits in the cupboard all the time. And they mm-hmm. certainly didn't come out of a packet. Mm. And you didn't get sick every time you ate. I mean, every time you eat food nowadays, you're going to the restroom. <laughs> I mean, you did by nature, but as far as just, oh, I just ate, I've got to go to the bathroom. It wasn't like that. You ate, you enjoyed your mm. food, your body got nourishment. And so people have to understand sometimes you have to go back to some old types of thinking in order to yeah. get things in a better place. Yeah. We need to stop and think about what it is that's changed. Mm-hmm. You know? It's about reflection on what's changed, where have we come from, where are we trying to go to, and what do we really want? That's another thing, you know, like what do you want? I ran a challenge a few weeks ago. I don't know whether anyone did it. No one commented. But it was like make a list of 100 things you want. And the first time I did it, I really struggled. You know, Really? It took me weeks to come up with 100 things, you know, Last wow. last you know last month when I did it, it probably took me three nights, and I only spent an hour or something each night. But at I least <laughs> I knew what I wanted. Where I didn't know what I wanted. You know, when yeah. I first did it, it was really a challenge. Are you like and knowing that? me, I probably have more than a hundred things. Like I'm crazy, but I'm gonna do that over the next couple of days. Yep, in the middle of packing and everything else. Yeah, hundred things that you want. Yep. Okay. Mm. And then to really manifest it, then put it out there in social media and say, "This is my list of a hundred things that I want." And you know, sometimes the things we want don't necessarily cost money either. You know, I want more hopes from my grandchildren. You know, yeah. And sometimes the things we want don't always come to pass like we think well you'll get it and then you'll be like oh I don't want it now this isn't this isn't exactly what I thought I recently had it happen something I wanted so bad and I got it and it was awful I was like oh never mind I don't want to do it and um I had worked really hard to get it and so um it was just kind of yucky so I'm, I'm rethinking that it was like dream deferred so to speak I had I, what it was is I had worked really hard to get a TED Talk. I've wanted a TED Talk forever and a day. Got the TED Talk. And unfortunately, it just, all TED Talks are not created equal. Um, When they contacted us, they were like, oh, you got three minutes on the stage. And I thought, what message am I going to get out in three minutes or four minutes, whatever it was. So that was like turn off number one. Because most TED Talks are at least eight to 10 minutes, at least. 10 minutes, yes. So they're like, you got four minutes. And I'm like, okay. The next piece was the coaching guy was all over the place. He just wasn't consistent with your with messages. So I'm like, well, aren't you supposed to coach us? Because coach TED Talks have coaches. And then the last piece was just the advertising was crazy. They were charging a lot of money for different stuff. And I said, you know what? This is either a dream deferred or a dream that's just not going to happen. And so I contacted the lady and I said, you know what? As much as I want a TED Talk, I am not willing to have a bad TED Talk. And she promised me, oh, it's not going to be bad. We, we want you on board. Don't worry about it. I said, no, I have to look at everything. I didn't get to this age and be stupid because in the past, like I said, when I was doing the church thing, I would have went, okay. I'll forgive you. Let's just do it anyway. Yeah, and then it would have yeah. been awful and yeah. a piece of crap, basically. And people would have been like, oh, that was a horrible TED Talk because I've seen some bad TED Talk. And so lo and behold, I just said, you know, no, I'm pulling out. Thank you for the opportunity. And maybe this is not the time right now. And then in the middle of everything, I found out we had to move and all this other stuff. So in a sense, that was a way, you know, mm. of the universe. Like, this isn't the time anyway. And mm. so I... I that's why I said sometimes you get stuff and you're like, oh no, this isn't gonna work. And um I had people contacting me later 
because it was on a, the group email and they were like, I pulled out too. It's just a lot of things weren't right. And a lot of people stayed on, but you have to decide, do I want something so desperately badly? It can be crappy and I've done that too. Or is it time for me to stand up and say, this is what I want myself, my brand and my image to be. And so that's what I chose. Mm. No more TikTok. Not right now anyway. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yes. No, that's not on my bucket list. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 it happens. Sometimes you have to, what you want is not what you think. Mm, exactly. I've never spoken on stage. So I did this, the whole stage thing would just freak me out. You know, really? I don't like talking to people one-on-one, -on -one, but to actually get on a stage, Oh, I don't know if I could handle that one. I don't know. Because this is your stage, whether you realize it or not. Stage. I have been speaking on stages since I was eight years old. Since and, you were eight? Some, mm -hmm. Yeah, since I was eight years old. And mm -hmm. so I I don't know. I think sometimes whether I realize it or not, I kind of clamor for the stage. <laughs> So yeah, I, I would love to be on a stage that big. I would I think I would just love it. I think I would just relish to be on a TED Talk stage. I think I would love it. And it doesn't have any TED Talk. I just I guess maybe I don't realize maybe I just like stages. But yeah, I've been speaking on stages since I was about eight. Mm, that's great for self-confidence. Maybe it's my self-confidence. I don't know. I've just never done it. No. And it's just whoa. I don't think it's self-confidence. I think it's just, you know. The stage can be daunting. It's not for everybody. The lights, the the timing, the sweat, the does, it, does the mic work, tap, 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 and all that kind of stuff. Because I've I've done stuff on stages without mics, with mics. I've you know I've done religious stuff. I've done acting stuff, um, plays and stuff like that. And uh, and then just overall, just a lot of speaking. Uh, because in the religious world, you end up speaking on stages a lot. Mm. Mm. so Eleanor where does everybody find your magazine they can find the magazine currently at www.prosperitymag.info and it has all the goodies on there everything they need to know about subscriptions purchasing issues uh, sponsoring and advertising it's all there yeah do you have an online version as well as the paper one? Yes, we have an online version right now. We're working on an upgraded version uh, right now. The uh, online version is just the basic electronic version where you, you know, you uh, we send it to your inbox once you purchase it, and you look at it that way. And we're hoping to get the. I think there's a new like flipper type version. So we're hoping to get that soon. But the version we have online, it still looks great. You can still read it with no problem. It's still amazing. Yeah. Yep. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And is there any last thing you would like to tell the listeners of this podcast? Don't think that magazines are on their way out. I know a lot of people say it, but people still love a good mag in their bag on vacation uh, mm -hmm. They still love a good read online because you can pull our magazine up on your phone and read it. So uh, we have imprint and online. And honestly, I was just having this conversation with a, a fellow publisher. She's going to go fully electronic. And I'm thinking about that as well, because now that you can do so much more with the electronic issues. So um, but don't think that your story won't be heard or that you can't have eyes on and all over the world because I love you never know where it's going to go I'll get an order and have to mail it out to New Zealand or something like that and so those that's what becomes amazing to me it's like oh how did they even yeah. find out about the magazine so I, I don't know what conversations are had but I'm happy that they're being had I'm happy that it's being purchased and I'm happy that people are seeing the stories that's the whole purpose of a magazine I mean it's great to make money but we're trying to tell the stories of people that we find interesting that we think you as the public will find interesting as well. And don't give up. Lastly, don't give up on whatever you want to do. In the middle of me feeling like one business was falling apart, I just decided to start another one because 
it was the what I like business and it was what was going to help pull me out of that funk. So don't sit and wallow when one thing fails. It can come back around at some point and be fixed. Failure is just, I hate the even word failure, like you're a failure. I hate the word. It, it's just a failure to meet certain things at that time for that entity, but something else can happen. So stop and think, like you said, you had the challenge of 100 things you want. Challenge yourself and say, what other things do I want to do when one business is not producing the results that you want? And you might be surprised what you pull out of yourself. So, but yeah. uh, oh, we'd love to have you guys and hopefully you all will get a copy of the magazine. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I hear you dead try. And besides the people that have failed the most are people like Elon Musk, are like Richard Branson. They have all failed more times than we've ever tried. Yeah. And lost a lot of money. <laughs> Richard but Branson that's... lost a lot of money. And he's he's got a, a whole different world of his life now, you know, airline, yeah. music, all kind of stuff. So yeah. it, it, it can happen. I mean, Bill Gates and Jobs, Steve Jobs and all them, they Bill Gates wouldn't be where he was if he hadn't got a, a loan from his mom to start his company. So, you know, yeah. it's because his his first company, people don't realize it failed miserably. He lost all his money. <laughs> hmm. So it's it's out there. And I love for the ladies to know it's out there for you. There's all kinds of stuff out there for you to do. You don't have to languish at jobs you hate anymore just to make ends meet as a single mom or, you know, as a person just trying to live your life. Women are doing big, big things. Women are now the number one business owners in the world, not just the country anymore. Right. So we now own the most small businesses in the world. I saw that statistic a couple of weeks ago. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow, I did, I've never heard that one. Wow, yes, yeah. we we are we have moved up, and we're opening we're opening small businesses at such a fast rate. All and they, you know, at first they said it was the United States. Now they said it's it's really traveling to other countries that women are just like, you know what? I don't want to do this nine to five thing anymore. I can do this over here instead. And so it's it's growing so fast. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. I love that. I love that statistic. Yeah. Love that statistic. Thank you so much for speaking to us today. It has been an absolute pleasure. And yeah, I hope everyone buys a copy of your magazine or a subscription so they get it every, it comes out monthly, doesn't it? Or is it bi-monthly? Uh, right now it's bi-monthly. Uh, we're thinking about trying to get it to monthly, but that's going to take a decision of whether or not I stay fully in print or digital. Right now, with uh, shipping and different things being all cuckoo crazy, uh, the imprint issues take a little bit longer to get. And I hate people waiting two weeks just to get an issue, although the issues are beautiful. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Because you get your like, electronic issue usually within about an hour of ordering it from the site. You know, it, com it comes out. But um, right now, we're just trying to decide. But right now, it comes out four times a year. So that's March, uh, June, September, and December. And we're probably going to take it up to six times a year and then hopefully monthly uh, after next year. Fantastic. Fantastic. And congratulations on such a huge success. Thank you so much. I can't wait for our partnership and time together. I think that's going to be amazing. And I think the ladies are just going to love it. And uh, I've told a few behind the scenes and they're just like, when is it all happening? So they're they're getting pretty excited. <laughs> and just for our listeners to know, the people that are in your magazine will become will come on the podcast, so they actually yeah. get a, a, a double dip, and everyone on the podcast can can hear these inspiring women who've achieved so much. Mm. And I think this is going to be so beneficial for both of us. I love it. I'm I'm super mm. excited. And um, I think it's going to be great for everybody as far as the magazine, the podcast. And I just love that as women, we're, we're working together on, on getting things for both of our businesses and helping the women that we're featuring. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Just helping women in general. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow is women of wisdom. That's where the wow came from. But that 
Okay, that's amazing. That's what I was wondering about. So I was like, wow, okay. Women yeah, of wisdom. Wow. Women of wisdom. Yeah. So that's where it came I from. I love that. I love that. I think that's going to be amazing. And um, so we'll, yeah, we'll promote, promote, promote. And uh, people are going to know the women of wisdom. <laughs> They're going to know the wow podcast. <laughs> They're going to know it. Because, yeah, I, I, I like to get things out there and I like people to know what's going on. And uh, so, yeah, it'll, it'll be good. And um, a lot of people worry about social media numbers. And I'm like, you know what? I've seen people with 2 million followers don't have anything going on. I've seen people with 150 followers and they have such a jamming, you know, place. I said, as long as what's going on behind the scenes is happening, that's all that matters. Social media is the helper and that's what we're going to use both of these to do to help us, yep. help me sell the magazine and help you with the podcast. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So thank you for today. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. And, uh, being patient with our crazy uh, um, internet issues over here in the uh, Dallas, Texas area. So <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm, no, I'm super happy to have been on. So thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Wow. Love, Light, Inspire, the podcast. And as I said, Wow is women of wisdom. And I'll tell you what, Eleanor certainly was a woman of wisdom. So a special thank you to Eleanor. You know, she really told us a lot and gave us some inspiration on how we need to keep following our dreams and we can do whatever it is that we put our mind to. You know, she um, she's such an amazing woman. So thank you, Eleanor. Now, every Friday we release new episodes and we speak to different inspirational women and they speak on so many different topics. So I'm sure that you would have enjoyed this podcast because I absolutely did. And if you can share it with your friends, that would be wonderful. So please press the subscribe button as well and then you will never lose. Press the subscribe button so you never miss another episode. I'd love it if you gave us a five-star rating too. That would be wonderful. And leave us a review. We really would like to hear from you. We'd love to know what you loved about our episodes. You know, we're always keen to hear what your takeaways are from each episode and all the other episodes that you've listened to as well. So this is Lorraine Roberts, your productivity strategist. So if you need help reinventing your own life, your business life, or any other part of your life, and you need help getting into action, then I'm the person you need. Having someone on your team who gives you ideas, strategies and methods and ways of doing things as well as being your accountability uh, as well as being your accountability buddy could be exactly what you need to make the changes and get the results in your life that you really want and this will put you ahead of the game so get in touch with me and have a free strategy session with me um, what have you got to lose and don't forget, if you need a break, a rest, or need to focus on your business, I'm taking a small group of women around the world to different locations, and we'll be working on personal goals, business goals, and doing some spiritual work, and having some fun as well. So next year, we're going to the rice fields in Bali. I'd love you to join us. So get in touch and reserve your spot. Also, do you know someone that has an amazing story? Maybe it'd be good for us to hear. Do you have an inspiring story that you would like to share? Then maybe you or your friend could be our next guest. If so, please contact us. We would love to hear from you. And if you'd like to get in touch, you can always find us on Love Light Inspire Facebook pages or Instagram, or you can go to the website www.lovelightinspire.com. And I really want to thank my producer, Nissa. She fixes all the stuff ups, all the mistakes that I make, and she puts all this together for you. So please remember, information spoken about today is general information only and not specifically about you, your situation. So if you need some help, assistance, or more information, please consult with an expert or get professional advice. Thank you. This is Lorraine Roberts.